weirded out. I was freaked out. I was like, what is this? Like, did this guy try to take my organs or something? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Francois Mark, your favorite American expat living in Seoul, South Korea. But I'm not in Seoul. Actually, I'm here in Mokpo. Hi, I am Mia. <laughs> oh, hi. <Where> from? <laughs> I'm I'm uh, from America. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I'm just working in here, but it's very interesting. So the first time partner traveler in here. Ah, so, so you're. I, I just I just want to say hi. Oh wow, very. Yeah. <laughs> I feel very special. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. What is your name? It's, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. What is your name? Uh, my name is Nana. Uh, my name is Francois. Ah, uh, Francois. Mm. You from French? I'm from America, but oh. I have a French name. Oh, that's cool. I've been I've been there one time, three times. In America. Oh really? Where did you go in America? Oh, watch out, watch out. Oh. You wanna see our office? Oh sure. Yeah. Is this your office here? Yeah, I'm uh, working in here. Mm -hmm. It's like a we one floor is like a co-working space and then second floor is like a bar. Something very strange happened to me while I was at the metro station in Seoul and it just made me think and remember about another time when I traveled on the KTX to Busan and another extremely strange thing happened to me. So let me tell you about that. Yo, this looks expensive. For one person it's 22,000 won. That's like... 22 US dollars. It's sogogi hanu dungshim. Ah, so it's Korean beef. No wonder it's so expensive. Love old Korean restaurants like this. Sometimes they can actually be like supermarkets too. I just love this style. This very crazy thing that happened to me is a story that took place about 11 years ago, one year after I arrived in Korea. I went to Busan with some friends. And this is a time when Busan wasn't as advanced or it wasn't as modernized or as uh, renovated as it is these days. So we had a hotel that was behind Busan Station. And at that time, Busan Station or the area behind Busan Station was a little dodgy so it wasn't the best of areas or the safest of areas to be. Mokpo is so full of color this is why I love coming to visit this place so picturesque. Finally I arrived at Bukang Station's cable car. I love cable cars even though when I get inside, I'm always scared. But before I get inside, I'm okay. Why do I keep getting in the cable car when I'm scared? I have no idea. Let me tell you about uh, the dodgy area of Busan. So behind Busan Station at the time when I went there, I think it was 2011, Busan's station area behind uh, where they have a lot of hotels and things and some Russian restaurants and things like that are very, very, uh, or is a very sketchy area. I'm not saying Russians are sketchy. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the area was really, really sketchy. So my friends and I had a hotel there for two or three nights I believe and we definitely did not want to walk around at night by ourselves. This is why I'm not buying a drone. Even out of the city, even out of Seoul, drones are still prohibited. Ugh, it's getting on my nerves. Okay hey guys, remember, whenever you're traveling, you always bring a bottle of water, always. Because when you're talking and you're moving, you start sweating, you're losing a lot of hydration. So it's very, very important to keep a bottle of water 
on you at all times. So let's take a break really quickly and get a sip of water so we can continue. My friends and I had the hotel. And remember, this is the time when cell phones weren't as developed as they are now. It's 2011. And in order to charge my phone, I need to take the battery out of the phone. Now I left my charger at home. What do people normally do in Korea when they leave their charger at home? They take the phone or the phone battery to the convenience store and the convenience store can charge the phone for you. Really convenient, really great Korea, good job. So I took the phone to the convenience store or the battery. When I went back to the convenience store to get the phone on my way back to the hotel, I was walking along the side of the road and a taxi pulls up next to me and the taxi honks the horn and I stop and I look at the taxi and the taxi rolls down the window and he says, hey, do you want some money? So the taxi driver waves me over to the car and I go into the driver's side seat. I motion like this to the taxi driver, I'm like, so what? And he says, no, 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 I have a lot of money. And I said, okay, I have a lot of money too. So the taxi driver says, no, I have more. He reaches in his pocket and he pulls out a huge stash of money. I mean, this thing was like a mountain. It was really, really big. So I'm looking at it and my eyes grow really, really big because I see a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm looking at the, the money and I'm like, okay, you have a lot of money. So give me the money. He says, no, 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 no. We trade money. And I say, wait, what? We trade money? What do you mean? He says, you give me your money and I will give you my money. And I said, uh, no, that seems kind of sketchy. So I continue walking. So I continue walking toward the hotel. The taxi driver, he gets angry. And now at this time, there are a lot of cars behind him and the cars began to honk their horns. So the taxi driver, he pulls over to the side of the road and he honks his horn at me. And I stop and I say, what, what do you want? And this taxi driver can actually speak really good English. So he says, I'll give you the money. So he opens the passenger side door and he puts the money on the seat, on the passenger side seat. And he says, if you want the money, you come take the money. I wanted the money, who wouldn't want the money? However, my spider senses began to tingle. I looked around and I thought, no, this is not a good idea. No great of an opportunity to have this much free money is, is free. Something has got to be up. So I declined and I said, no, and I kept walking. And the taxi driver said a bad word in Korean, like, ah, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then he closed the passenger side door and he drove away. I was very, very weirded out. I was freaked out. I was like, what is this? Like, did this guy try to take my organs or something? Why would he offer me free money like that? So I went home and I researched places in Asia, especially in dodgy areas. Sometimes there are people who can kidnap you and when they kidnap you, they can take your organs. Now, uh, the research that I found, some of the stories say that if you take money from people like that, it's basically like an agreement saying that you have signed away your right for them to take your organ. I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know, but this is a story that I found among other stories on the internet about why people would offer you free money in dodgy areas in Asia. <laughs> As I was on the metro going to the bus station on my way here to Mokpo, I had a very similar experience happen to me at the metro station in Seoul that I explained to you about in Busan. It had me thinking like, there's no way in the world that a situation like that could have happened to me twice in Korea and especially in Seoul. Korea is one of the top five safest places in the world that I have ever traveled to, that I have ever lived in, that I have ever stayed in for an extended amount of time. And I've been to many, many, many countries and many, 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 many cities. I am not saying anything about the safety of Korea. However, I just want to remind everyone that no matter where you are, no matter how safe you think a place is, it is always important to mind your surroundings. It is always very important to look around you to make sure that you are in a safe environment for yourself, regardless of 
whether you think the place is safe or not. Like me, here in Korea, I'm always raving on about Korea's safe, Korea's safe. You can leave your things here, no one will take them. You can leave your things here, no one will take them. No one will bother you. But anyways, just make sure that you mind your surroundings. So I'll see you later, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you for watching. I love you all. Make sure you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace.